You might have experienced that before. I certainly have. The slightly fat shot, the high launch, high spin, left to right, doesn't really give me any advantage distance wise, especially as I go further up the set, all the distances start to bunch up. So we don't get that gap in between the irons. I'll often hear, I'm okay with my shorter irons and can kind of get a, an expected kind of distance. But then as we go further up the set, we don't get that incremental increase, but we still get that kind of high, spinny ball fly and the left to right shape but not only that the club's doing this as we're releasing this golf club we've got the butt end moving back which is going to happen at some point in your golf swing but if it's happening too early we've now got a low point that's moving back as the club head is moving forward now like I say this is going to happen but if it happens too early this low point which is below the butt end of the club so if I was to drop a plumb line from here, that's the low point. As this moves back, the low point's moving back and back and back as the club's moving forward. And it's basically like hitting a moving target. That low point's moving back at such a rapid rate. We've got to time the club head at the exact point where it matches up with the butt end to get that low point just where we want it. We've got to time that where the ball is. So we're making it much more difficult for ourselves. So if I use a an alignment stick we've got to catch these at just the right moment in time where the ball is to get the shot these are not great traits for consistency and this is what most golfers are looking for we're looking for that consistency so you'll often hear me talk on the channel about unloading and loading and what are these and how can these help you time that release to get that low point and get that strike and that flight that we want well the loading phase is when we're actually allowing our body to fall so our centre of mass is accelerating down to the ground. It's like a passive loading into the ground. And now we're gonna unload from the ground. Now we're gonna push. And as we push, this starts to unload us from the ground, essentially accelerating our body weight in the opposite direction. And when we go up, the club starts to go down. This starts to release. When you unload from the ground, we start to fire the sequence. We start to fire the pelvis the torso the shoulders we're now applying that force to the club which is going to start to rotate it it's going to start to swing down and out it's also going to start to rotate this way these are all desirable but we want them at the right time so it's the unloading phase that releases the club but it's the loading phase that's going to give us the timing this is the key how do we load how long do we load and then how do we unload to fire that release at the right time so the golf ball is behind the low point so as we're moving this low point stays in front it's still going to go back but it doesn't matter because it's still in front of the ball so we've still got the ball on the turf we're used to this handle rotating so early instead of it rotating in this direction we actually want it rotating anti-clockwise for me clockwise for you from where you're looking at it so this is a very different feeling to have the golf club rotating this way as we're moving into the ground and loading in what might feel a very counterintuitive direction because we're going this way surely the golf club's got to rotate this way and swing that way yes it does but much later because before that phase we've got this loading phase and while that's happening this golf club is starting to change direction there isn't a top of backswing these positions don't exist, they're just moments in time of emotion. So there is no top of backswing that we get to and then swing down from. There's just a change of direction. The club goes from swinging this way to then the opposite direction towards the target. This is very much controlled by how we interact with the ground and this is what we're going to explore in a minute because this is pressure shift that's moving our body weight and we're going to sense this as momentum. We want the golf club rotating this way as we're loading which means it's going to have to come with us this is loading the system instead of me loading the grip and releasing the club early i'm letting the golf club load me so how do we do it well we use these pressure domes these are going to come with a new training aid we've got coming out but you can use half a tennis ball you'll have seen me use half a tennis ball in lots of lessons that will easily suffice and provide the feedback you need to recognize the movements and the timing of them. So I'm gonna place this foam pressure dome on the floor, stand about half a stance width away 
from the dome. The dome's underneath the ball of my foot, okay? And what I'm gonna do is just move to the side half a step, and put my feet together. Because what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a step, step, push exercise. If you like, it's a step and a squat and a push. The push is a jump or a spring. Term it how you like, but it's really, it's half a step, so we call that the step. So that's step, squat, okay, this is the load in. This is where we're allowing our body weight to fall and let it fall quick, which means we've got to go into flexions. You might see some of the top tour players do it on TV. We're not trying to copy them. We don't want to try and match their swing. We've got our own swing to, to develop. Everybody's got their own unique swing. What we can do is we can look at how they're using their body in relation to loading and unloading. We'll all have our own way of doing it and experience it differently, but ultimately we're using similar forces. When we load the hips, the knees and the ankles, they're gonna flex. It can appear to be a squat. It's really just a falling. It's like just a landing, a soft landing into the ground. The pelvis doesn't stay up and level, it drops. So we're going down, we fall into the ground and this acceleration of our mass is gonna load us into the ground really effectively, ready for the unload. So when we're here, we do the half step and then we do the drop. So it's a step and a drop and now we're gonna use the left leg, and this is the unload, this is the vertical force, we're gonna spring. But to spring, we're using ankle extension, knee extension, hip extension, and this is gonna pop the hip, this is gonna lift the pelvis. And notice the direction I'm pushing, I'm pushing away from the pressure dome. I'm pushing away from the target, not towards the target. If we want this thing to accelerate, we have to be able to oppose the force we're creating. So if we want to accelerate this mass as fast as we can, that's going to create a lot of force that we need to oppose. So this vertical force is going to provide a braking force. This helps to stop, create stability, and let this go. And we can handle that force. We can let it go. And that's the key. It's the timing of it. So now we go step, load, or step, drop. And you'll notice, look where the club is. The wrists fully cocked, elbows flexed, everything feels loaded. My body weight is moving in this direction and the club head is coming with me. Look where the butt end's pointing. The butt end's rotating that way. Club head's coming this way as I'm going towards the target. And because we've shifted to the left, we're now moving forward. As soon as we start to go vertical, it's going to facilitate this low point which is now forward of the ball. I don't suggest you do this exercise, it could be quite dangerous, but we're actually springing away. So there's actually an extension but a rotation, there's a pivoting torque here too. So we're not just jumping back, we're actually jumping back and away, this way, back and away. There's a high club head speed here. Now we've got to get a sense of when we let it go. So there's a fall in. This is priming the system, ready to unload. It's there. And then we can get the strike with the ground. That's quite a big divot, but notice where it is. It's in front of the ball. The deepest part of the divot's here. It was traveling down. And that's quite strange. That can be a strange feeling because I was going up at that point. And that divot happened as a result of me going up. So the notion of lifting your head isn't strictly true because I had to go up to get that downward strike, but I had to do it at the right time. I had to load and then unload. So we're getting a more controllable release by just letting it go at the right time. This is not trying to control the release, trying to gain some form of club head stability, club face control, path control. It's actually just letting the golf club release at the right time, which naturally creates all these variables that we're chasing. All these impact factors will happen naturally as the function of a later release. Much more how you move with the body in relation to loading and unloading that creates that natural release and all these desired impact factors than actually chasing these impact factors one by one and thinking about strike and path and face rotation, shaft lean, angle of attack, all these things happen as a byproduct of timing that release with this. And this is the method to do it. Moving the body, timing the sequence, 
recognizing when you unload and getting that divot getting that ball turf contact so it's a step load unload and then feel it in the swing so next time you go to the range take your half tennis ball do a few exercises on the tennis ball you don't need to swing the club it's the step drop push and just bear in mind in what direction you're pushing not just away from the target but backwards and away so if that's the target i'm pushing this way and that's going to give you an idea of how to use the ground how to unload and give you that draw shape to the swing give you that strike de-loft get the compression lower that spin penetrating flight nice draw and then you're going to start to see those distances between those longer clubs increase and get the gap in that you'd expect and get the most out of the full set of clubs in the bag and just feel better striking that ball Thank you.